to uh, just for a few moments uh, imagine with us a church service it could be a church service anywhere a pastor's up and he's preached the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ and after that message he gives an invitation but we would like for you for just a moment to imagine with us the forces that take place behind the scenes in the minds of those that are in attendance of the service we'd also like for everyone in attendance if you would not respond until after the real altar call is given but we'd like to present to you this evening's production the altar call I'm finishing up my sermon, but in closing, I just feel led to say something. I don't know why, but I feel the urging of the Holy Spirit to share this. I just feel we have some in this congregation tonight that are at a crossroad in their life. At one point or another, we all come to these crossroads where we have difficult choices to make. Choices that literally could make us or break us. I want everybody here to look at me tonight because I want you to really get this. One wrong choice could change your life forever. One wrong choice could change it in ways that you could never ever imagine and I'll take it one step further than that tonight and tell you the one choice one wrong choice that could change your life could also change the life of your family your friends even people you don't even know you see You'd like to think that you can be self-absorbed and think that your choices couldn't affect anybody else. But you see, choices simply just don't work that way. No, choices have a ripple effect. And once you make that decision, eventually those decisions begin to touch other people in a positive or in a negative way depending on what path you choose to go on. As the musicians come, and please, every head is bowed and every eye is closed tonight. What choice or decision do you have to make tonight? Maybe it's a life or death decision. Someone's life may depend on a decision you're about to make tonight. Can I give you some advice? If you're questioning whether or not the decision that you're about to make is a good one, then more than likely, it's not. Some really good advice tonight would simply be this. When in doubt, don't do it. Or we might have someone here tonight that hasn't accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. And you see, that is the most important choice, young people, that you could ever, ever make in your life. I don't care how old or how young you are, if you feel the tugging of the Holy Spirit on your heart right now, you need to come and get saved. Don't put it off another second. You need to come today. And whatever that choice may be, please come and ask for God's guidance on that. Get the victory. Get the peace that you so desperately want in your life. And you can leave this place tonight feeling absolutely fearless and focused on your relationship with Jesus Christ. Please, won't you come? Jesus is calling you. Won't you come?
about the life or death decision I have to make. I mean, he couldn't possibly know, but it's almost like he was talking right at me. I just don't know what to do with knowing that Chase drinks and it's beginning to get out of control. He's even driven while he's been drunk. I mean, I've tried to tell him he needs help, but he just won't. And he told me not to tell anyone. Do I tell someone or just let it go? He'd kill me if I told anyone. Simon, you know what drinking leads to. People lose their God-given conscience and reason. And under the influence, they would surely might do something that they could regret forever. Romans 14, 21 says that it is good neither to eat flesh nor drink wine nor do anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is given offense or is made weak. Simon, come on to me and I will show you how important it is that you tell someone about Chase so that it might be put to an end. The devil will try to tell you that you're betraying your friend, but in truth, it is the only way you can help. Son. <laughs> Son. 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 Chase. Chase is your friend. Chase is your friend. You don't want to betray his trust, do you? <laughs> oh, I mean... since like kindergarten. I really don't want to lose him as a friend. And I mean, he's only gotten behind the wheel once while he was drunk. And he said he wouldn't even do it again. When Chase is drunk, he is a different person. Sober, he might make promises, but when he drinks, he'll soon forget. I say, Simon, not every spirit is of God. You must try the spirits and see if they are of me. The next time he drinks and drives, he could die or take an innocent life. He could wind up in prison. And he would surely regret it for the rest of his days and even for all eternity. So what if he don't remember the promises he makes? <laughs> He's his own person. Why are you responsible for his decisions? I mean, come on. If he, if you don't tell, and he drives under the influence, if he dies, he won't be mad at you. Wouldn't you rather him be your friend when he dies? <laughs> Silence, Satan. Simon, make no mistake, you have a responsibility to your friend. As his friend, as one of my children, you're obligated to help. Bear ye one another's burden that you might fulfill my law. If Chase were to die, with you knowing of his need, Simon, in a sense, his blood would be upon your hands. Come to me, Simon. I will give you the courage and strength to do what you must do to help your friend. All right, God, I can't do this anymore. I just want to do what's right. Please show me. This one has come tonight. Are there others? This altar call has been extended for you. Really, God? Did you really have to add to my confusion? I'm trying to figure out what to do, and you trying to make me feel guilty isn't helping. My boyfriend loves me, and I love him. He isn't pressuring me. He just wants to show me how much he loves me. Why shouldn't we take that next step in our relationship? 
grace, my daughter, I am not the author of confusion. My perfect design is for one man and one woman to enjoy intimacy within the protection of holy wedlock. Flee fornication. For every sin that a man doeth is without his body. He that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. I say this to you to protect you, Grace, to spare you from heartache, for you were not made for such as this. Resist temptation, and the devil will flee. Grace, 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 listen. you will never be alone. You have your family. You have your friends. And you will always have me. Be patient. Wait for that perfect relationship I have for you. That Christian husband that I am even preparing for you now. For it is this cause that a man shall leave his parents and cleave on to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. Let no man put asunder what God has put together. I know that waiting is hard, Grace, but I promise you will never regret it. Grace, Grace, listen to me. The only way you can really know someone is to be intimate with them. The only way you can truly have a relationship with someone to let them sleep with you or live with you. It's the only way. It's the only way. I mean, really, do you want to spend the rest of your life with someone and not get to know them first? I think it makes pretty good sense to me. So uh, why don't you just, why don't you just go ahead and do that? Take it to the next level. Be still, oh. like Tom. Grace. What I've asked of you is righteous and true. I do this to spare you of great regret and remorse. If you obey me, the blessings will be bountiful. If you disobey, your sorrows will be deep. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. This includes the husband that I have planned for you. Come to me. And I will give you the courage to do that which is right. You know, my boyfriend is right. We love each other. Yeah. What's wrong with us expressing that? That's right. Plus, how will I know if he's the right guy for me if I don't take this step? And I don't want to lose him. I think I'll text him when I get home and tell him I'm ready to do this. I just hope everything works out. Good. Good choice, Grace. Good choice. <laughs> One more verse and chorus. I just feel like there's others that need to come to the altar tonight. Yes. You know, I don't know if I've ever gotten saved. I don't remember a time or a place where I asked Jesus to come into my heart. I'm just always following my parents' lead. Maybe I should go look at this settled so I know for sure. Oh, Alex, my son, come on to me. The drawing you feel is the blessed Holy Spirit. If you would but confess me with thy mouth and believe in thine heart, you shall be saved. Come on to me for the peace and rest of knowing that your eternity is safe in me and your sins are forgiven. <laughs> Alex, is it? What are you, uh, 13? You're, you're still a child. 
You don't know what you're doing. Come on. Why don't you just wait a little bit longer till you understand really what you're getting into? You remember your dad always saying, I got saved at the age of five. He didn't know what he was doing either. <laughs> Listen, son. Hey, just wait a little bit longer till you understand it a little better, okay? I'm young. There's so much I don't understand and don't know. Right. Maybe I should wait until I'm at least 14 or 15. Yeah, Maybe longer. then I'll be able to better explain to people what it means to be a Christian. Simon, you're wondering is the very proof that you're ready for this. You don't have to overcomplicate this. It's as simple as for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in me should not perish but have everlasting life. You don't have to have all the uh, all the answers. Once you've chosen me, that will come. <laughs> Alex, okay. Say you do get saved. And on down the road, one of your friends asks you and says, what does it mean to be saved? You, and you have a hard time understand, uh, telling him what you did and, and you stumbled over your words, wouldn't that be embarrassing? I think it would be. I don't even think you want to get involved with that. Just wait a little bit longer, son. A little bit longer. Just wait. Get thee behind me, Satan! Uh, and be gone! Uh, My gospel is simple and true. I died for your sins, Simon. If you would but come on to me, I shall give you the gift of the Holy Spirit and eternal life when you are gone and dead. Simon, don't worry about the words. The Holy Spirit will give them into your mouth to say what you need to say when those times come. Now, child, come on to me and be made whole. You're right, God. I'm ready to get saved. And even though I'm young, I know what to do. so proud to announce that Alex came to give his heart to Jesus. Alex, I can tell you with assurance that you'll never ever regret this day. And since you have made this step as a young, at a young age, it'll make growing up even sweeter. For, for those of you that should have come to get things settled tonight, but didn't, I can only hope and pray that decision you have decided to make won't be one that you regret the rest of your life. Tonight you saw something that's all too real. The battle for someone's soul. You saw good decisions. And you saw a very bad decision tonight. The Lord calls. And he wants us to respond. But at the same time, on the other side of the equation, the devil doesn't make it easy, does he? We heard tonight young people holding on to things when 
they should be surrendering those things. I'm going to ask you to bow your head tonight.